Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and as you can see over here on the bench I've got a little tray with some kitchen scraps in it, a piece of melon rind, a half of a corn cob, there's a banana peel in here obviously, some cucumber peelings, a whole bunch of little yummy stuff that the worms are probably going to like. And my mission today is to revisit a bin that we checked in on only five days ago. It's the, the box that's positioned over in the location on my shelf that's usually reserved for the oldest of my systems. And as of five days ago, it was my oldest system, 300 days of age when we checked in there to haul out the worms and launch off two brand new systems with those worms. And even though we also gave time in that migration process to let all the cocoons in the material hatch and hopefully a lot of the babies get rounded up at that point too, we saw many, many worms that were left behind in the haul out. So we figured we would just let this sit and we would revisit this at some point to try to round up those little wormies. And after five days of letting this just sit here and air out a little bit, I think it's time to get back to work on making sure that all the worms that were left behind in the haul out get rounded up and ex extracted. Then we can really put these castings into storage, clean out the bin, put it to use elsewhere, and write this off as having no more loose ends. So I'm going to put on a glove, get this thing up on the bench, and we're going to get to work. So now in addition to these foods off screen, I've also got a number of things set aside to help me with this little project. It shouldn't take too much effort. I've got my supply of pre-made bedding. And the nice thing is that we've already got a whole bunch of seasoned bedding that was part of the horizontal migration feeding zone. That's really how this started was I had collected up our little divider cardboard, all the little scraps that had made up the feeding zone. And... We put it all there, it was like a more than a handful, a good lump of stuff. So we probably don't have to um, supplement it with too much. But it was stuff that was meant to really reduce the um, distraction or the clutter for when we did the haul out. And it helped a lot, but we did brand, end up bringing a bunch of castings along for the ride too when we hauled out the, um, hauled out the worms. It seemed like, you know, Oh, you know what? It had already occurred to me that by placing the plastic over this cardboard and paper collection to keep it nice and damp, I knew that I was allowing the rest of the bin to sort of slowly dry and that this corner would be the only game in town for moisture. So I thought that I was, by doing it that way, sort of jump-starting the movement of the worms into this material here, though. So even though we have not added any food to it, there is a likelihood that the worms have already, you know, yeah, occupied it. And I, I was definitely not 100% certain either about, you know, how many worms I had dislodged and removed from this material. To keep them with the haul out rather than take them along with the, the bedding, dis bedding distraction extraction. <laughs> So whatever, the removal of the distraction of the cardboard. So let's um let's scoop out all these cardboard bits because they'll be useful to help us rebuild this collection area. And I talked about maybe baiting it, maybe throwing a box in here that's got some stuff in it. Um, and then you could just pull the whole box out. The other option is to reset the horizontal migration feeding zone so that once again we're trying to lure them into one of these feeding zones rather than to sort of a bait box. So I think all the worms that collected around the the, the bedding, leftover bedding bits, were maybe some of them were already in or on the stuff, but a lot of them probably also made their way over. Coming over for the presence of moisture in this corner underneath the plastic, and then staying when they found all that nice bedding in there. Because this stuff over here is basically our batch of finished castings. I guess the big question in my mind is, you know, how about the dry stuff or the stuff that's been left to dry a little further? We left it uncovered as you saw, but it usually doesn't take much. You only have to go down a little bit into a batch of castings, even ones that have just been exposed to the air and drying, to reach the material that's no longer dry, but it's nice and damp and cozy. So I think over here it was not unusual to see worms within the material. But I think as we start to make our way away from that corner where the moisture was 
permitted to recirculate under the plastic. We'll see more and more worms, but I mean, you saw that little sweep that I did here as we radiate away. I believe we're going to start to find that this material has already started into the, or has continued with, <laughs> the depopulation process. Now, I had a suspicion that maybe the reason it had not gone full depopulated was because of a good amount of moisture still lingering within this stuff. So I had hoped that those five days of the material just being left uncovered would help, and it does seem like it has, you know. Out here I'm seeing virtually no worms. Any worms that were in this stuff probably got to looking around. Here's one. I found one. <laughs> or maybe he was, I don't know, I'm not going to theorize. Here's another one. So, you know, it's not fully inhospitable or dangerous for worms yet because there's a couple intrepid souls that are still holding out and hanging out in it. But I would say that for the large part, we can treat the stuff that's furthest away from where the horizontal migration feeding zone had been positioned as more or less depopulated. Here's another another brave soul. But I don't think it's going to take a whole lot of time for the worms to realize that, hey, there's got to be something better. Let's go find it. And it does seem like all these little corners, if I could dislodge the material down in that corner where it's, you know, potentially hanging on to a little pocket of moisture, and allowing the rest of the material, which is getting drier and drier as I keep blending in the dry stuff that we collected on the surface, as we um, bring up the more moist stuff to the surface to let it air out and dry further. This stuff, I think, in a fairly short period of time is going to become such that the worms are going to want out. And for the most part, they are out. So we've got a few more worms to collect up on the other end, I believe. So, let's see, I, I guess this material here too, just the same as all the rest, is, even though it's already got worms hanging out in it, I'd really like to combine it with the more dry stuff, kind of force it to suddenly be a lot drier than it was just a moment ago, so that once we set up this migration zone, they'll be inspired to seek it out and go hang out over there and not want to just remain camped out in the stuff that they're in right now. Nice and damp, cozy stuff. I'm even wondering if we could like push in oops, sorry, push in this more dry stuff and then maybe even take this more damp stuff and just sort of comb it across the top of the entire batch so it's pretty evenly spread out but it's all on the top surface out here to let it keep drying. And the stuff is re very resistant to drying, so it's not going to happen overnight. It'll happen very gradually, giving the worms a chance to either dive down to find something more hospitable or hopefully wander. Wander out to the edge of the bin that we're going to reset for them over here. And we'll collect them out of there soon. The only one funny little thing I do sometimes is put up a little divider. And one of the elements that we had collected last time was the actual divider that we had used and it was actually a piece of cardboard that hung all the way down to the bottom was full of holes to allow worms to move through it and then later on we just started positioning the thing somewhere near where we thought the dividing line was because all the material that had been submerged under the under the castings had been nibbled away by the worms so yeah I don't think there's a whole lot more to go but it's going to take a few more days and it's going to take a nice tempting collection area to make it happen. So let's get that set up. I do like the idea of having a, a partition though. Just to keep these nice castings separate from the collection area where I'm going to use maybe some shredded, shredded paper and cardboard and leaves mixed in with the recycled bedding and cardboard paper mix that we've got over there to really make a nice appealing spot for the worms that would, what they would want to come over to and hang out in and stay in. So you know what? Short break. I'm going to create a little divider here and then we can assemble this thing. I've got everything else I need just that. So after tailoring the piece of cardboard to fit nicely into its position, I go ahead and then I puncture it full of little holes, hopefully making it very easy for any worms that want to pass through it to pass through it. So I'm certainly not doing this by any means to try to hinder worm movement. 
In fact, I do want them to move through it for sure. All right, you know what? I think we can make it pretty good size, maybe even this big. It doesn't have to be too large. In fact, the smaller we make it, come to think of it, the more space we'll have here to lay it all out and let it um, continue to dry. In fact, we could put it at a little bit of an angle so there's more surface of this material up against the partition to allow for worms to have access to the way through. And there's even a nice little gap right below for them to squirm under. So, I like it. Let's get this thing set up. So now, I think that we could use a couple of these pieces of cardboard tube as little standoffs to give us a good, uh, a good consistent distance for the partition wall to be placed. I think that should do. There's going to be plenty of room in here. And we can make it as deep as we want. It doesn't have to be too deep, though. I think the trick here, though, is going to be that we maximize access to all these little holes by maybe pushing up this edge of the material a little bit higher up against the cardboard wall and then just leveling it all off. If there's a little bit less material on the far end that'll just allow for that stuff to become even drier more quickly I believe. Almost guaranteeing the worm exit over there. And then as they make their way over here they're just gonna invariably sense the much nicer place to be beyond the cardboard and just go there I believe. And then we'll have a nice batch of uncontaminated castings here which will also be worm free I believe. All right so down into here we've got a good number of worms already hanging out in this stuff. I think if we just empty all the old stuff and do so without spilling anything. <laughs> Let's see if we can accomplish that. There's a little wormy stuck to the plastic here. But I believe we've got all of them. No, there was even one little tiny one right there on the rim. Very, very small. You really do have to take care if you don't want to miss any. Because some of them are... I doubt that the camera is even going to see that. Right there on the tip of my finger. Can you believe how small that little wormy is? I don't even know if it's going to be visible. <laughs> so they're in there. And luckily their little pink color helps them stand out. But I think we got them all. I'll take one more look before I write that off as... A done deal. So, as you can see, good number of castings littering this material here. Could have easily shaken that stuff off, kept it with the finished castings, but I like giving the wormies a little bit of familiar material that they can kind of retreat to if they get nervous or uncomfortable. That's why we're going to create that lower level of all existing stuff, and on top we'll just supplement it so that we've got a nice full horizontal migration feeding zone. Since this stuff here is frozen though, we could allow the worms to retreat. You know, I shouldn't worry so much. Letting worms, you know, touch frozen material never used to concern me, but you hear people, you know, making mention of it. It's like, oh my goodness, but I really don't think there's anything to worry about. I think a worm's wily enough to sense that something's a little too cold to be in contact with and pull away and get away easily enough without being frozen to death on the spot. I mean, they're tough little critters. I think we got to give them a little bit more credit. So I can't go all the way to the top. I'm going to have to get this food in here. The stuff I took out of the freezer a little while ago. So it's already thawed out quite a bit. Maybe this stuff isn't even going to cause a peril over here because of its frozen nature probably not going to be an issue so as you can see we're giving them a pretty nice variety of things to nibble on all kinds of yummy bits of this and that all their favorites I believe are represented here <laughs> sometimes you wonder if their most favorite thing is just the bedding the nice fresh bedding the fresh bedding that I am going to add also has nice moisture content as does that recycled bedding that was protected from evaporation by being covered by plastic. So what's in here already is nice and damp. The frozen veggies and fruits I believe will also contribute a little bit of moisture as they thaw and begin to break down. But we can even um, 
supplement with moisture if we felt we had to. I don't think we have to, so I think I'm just going to resist the urge to add water. I don't think it's necessary. We'll, um, we'll just work on getting this thing covered up at this point and letting it get back to the process of worm depopulation. So these things I'm sprinkling in now, the first thing was some worm chow, and the and second thing was just some grit. So I don't know if the worms come over. This is all, for the most part, fresh material. I know some of the bedding that we recycled might have a little bit of grit mixed into it or onto it, but I figured let's make this into a nice complete replacement temporary home for them so that when they get out of the uh, out of the castings they're going to want for nothing they'll have all the bedding they can require they'll have grit if they need it if they come up looking for it so chances are they're going to wander the surface at some point these are just sort of the surface feeding type creatures so if you really want them to get after something you put it up on the surface because that's kind of their nature to at some point eventually make their way to the this top surface and explore or whatever so we've um laid out a little bit of fresh bedding but it certainly didn't need much to get us to the top of the little partition wall we're pretty much there at the top and we've given them everything that i had intended to give them i guess we can maybe even sprinkle a little bit more of this stuff right on top of that worm chow and I'll be curious to see how this top layer gets handled. You know, we got the nice seasoned bedding down low. We've got the food right on top of it. I mean, you know, a bedding person might suggest that that's where the worms are going to come. But maybe this top layer of nice fresh bedding with the worm chow and grit might have some appeal as well. And kind of the way we found it when we first arrived, I'm going to be strategically positioning our plastic covering to force the recirculation of moisture only over here over the feeding area allowing the castings at large to just continue getting drier and drier gradually becoming less and less cozy for the worms to want to stay in hopefully triggering a little bit of movement out of these little guys over into the more comfortable feeding zone so it's always Kind of a good feeling to take care of some loose ends and this was one that was an easy one one that i knew it had to get started at some point soon and the payoff is going to be some nice fresh real estate up on my shelf that i can certainly use because i'm always running out of room <laughs> so that's it for today's video everyone hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel all right everyone have a great day thanks so much for watching Bye bye